Good afternoon all, how are you? So let's open some bags of post. It's post bag. Right, let's open these first. Um, they're all the same item, but this one on the right is troubling me a little bit. Um, I bought these from three different sellers, but actually they've come from the same address. Um, so three sellers using the same, I don't know, warehouse or something like that. Um, let me open this one first, because that's the one, as I say, that's bothering me. And it's a pen top and it's a flux pen. But why would they send this? Hmm, let me reset the exposure. Why would they send this um, with the pen top removed? That's completely crazy. The other two seem to have their pen tops on. Now, if these have come from the same seller, why would they decide that this one wouldn't fit in the jiffy bag and had to have its lid removed? madness um let's just quickly open the other two and i'm not going to show all three sellers that would be completely pointless so i'll just show one of them yeah that's the same flux pen and these aren't like my other flux pen these are cheap nasty ones i'll uh, i'll show you what i mean in a moment but yeah they're all the same now just look for a moment at the difference between the ones that have their top still on which are these they're all nice and moist this one's all dried out um, but the things I like least, the thing I like least about these ones um, is it doesn't look to me like these come apart. Here's my other flux pen. Um, this one given to me by Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, this one comes apart. You can unscrew that and you can see uh, the liquid flux in there. You can actually also undo that. It's a friction fit. And then you can see right down into the flux. I could pull that all over my bench if I felt so inclined. I don't. Um, but yeah, these ones don't look like they come apart. So certainly I'll be looking when I order flux pens for this type. It's the same code actually, this 951 there. I'm pretty sure that when it had its labels on was 951. So I think that's the actual type of substance inside. Yeah, but I like the pen you can dismantle and not these sort of cheap one piece pens, which don't look like they come apart. Let's check them out on eBay. So these are they. Well, you only get one, of course. Um, it is a 10 milliliter, probably not now if they've left the cap off. Um, well, actually, of course, that might have made this solvent evaporate. Um, not necessarily the flux. I don't know how evaporative both of those two substances are. Um, 951 free cleaning solder flux pen for solar cell. OK. $1.35. I think they're all the same price. Uh, this one was free shipping from Jin Shan 2013. As I say, I'm not going to go through all three, but what I will do is I'll put um, links to all three that I bought uh, in the uh, description below the video. Okay, next up is this. Now I have actually opened this, so I'm going to remove the contents from the bottom of the box. And uh, there it is. Let's undo the bubble wrap and see what we have oh it's smaller <laughs> smaller than i thought it was going to be quite a lot smaller there you come oh it's a really dinky little uh super capacitor module with those 2.7 volt 10 farad super capacitors on a board with mm, protection circuits let's take a closer look um, yeah, this really is quite tiny, isn't it? I'm going to have to zoom in. Right, let's take a look at um, some of the components on here. We've got discharge resistors here, uh, 4R7. Now, I'm pretty sure that this I13 thing, I vaguely remember that that was the numbering on the MOSFET. And then on this device here, I think I'll need my magnifying glass. Yeah, so that device there is M73X, and that number rings a bell as well as that voltage detector I see, uh, 2.7 volts, I think it was. I'll look it up and just check and uh, maybe even get a data sheet or two. Well, I can't immediately find um, data sheets for these two devices, but if I search for the M73X, it comes up with voltage detector I see. Um, even though I can't find a data sheet, if I search for I13, it comes up with MOSFET 
but I can't directly find a data sheet, but I'm pretty certain that's what these are. This is a voltage detector MOSFET um, protection circuit, which when the voltage goes over a certain threshold, it switches very suddenly on, puts this resistor across the capacitor. You can put um, a blue LED across there, blue or white. Might even be able to solder one over the top of there, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I could probably put indicator LEDs on this. Um, interestingly, we've got that CDA logo there. It's the same logo that's actually on the capacitor. So it looks like the manufacturer of the capacitors also makes this board, which I just thought was amusing. So what I'm planning to do with this is to charge it up with this, the RTC3780 uh, buck boost module. So I can put, I don't know, any voltage in there, pretty much 12 volts from my solar power system. Um, put that onto there and charge this up to 16.2. I can set the voltage uh, cutoff or the voltage limit to 16.2 volts. And I should see some of these LEDs come on because the capacitors will be imbalanced, but then the whole thing should settle down. And uh, this one, you, you see a sort of switching between the different um, capacitor circuits as one will go a bit higher then the uh, discharge circuit switches on, that one will come down a bit, another one will go higher, and they just sort of bob around. It's quite interesting to watch. It's like a random light show. But um, the thing I'm trying to establish is whether or not I need a, a back anti-backfeed diode between the output of this buck boost converter and this little supercapacitor module. I'm not going to fit one. Um, I'm kind of sort of thinking about the topology of these four MOSFETs. Um, and that shouldn't create um, an issue where this would get damaged. I'm pretty sure if you switch this off, I've got my little switch on there now, then all the MOSFETs should turn off. And although this might still backfeed into here because perhaps there's some resistance from pos to neg for some of the measuring circuitry, it might discharge this, but I just wonder whether it would actually damage this. I can't see it myself. Yeah, I really don't like these black PCBs because you just can't shine any light through them to try and follow the traces. I mean, you can just about, we can see it there in the daylight, you can just about see the slightly raised um, copper areas, but it's so much more difficult than if you can shine a torch through it. You just can't do it with these black PCBs. So this item is a 16 volt, um, well, I suppose 16.2 really, isn't it? Six times 2.7. 6 ms of 42, yeah, there's a 2 on the end. Um, 1 farad, what does that mean? 16 V 1 F, don't know. 1.6 farads, of course, is the overall capacitance. It's uh, 10 farads divided by 6. 2 farads, I don't know what that means. Farad capacitor, 2.7 volts, 10 farads each capacitor with protection board, of course. Uh, this module is $12.99, free shipping. And this came from My Dream 2017. Right, next up is this one. Now, I've no idea what this is. I never wrote anything on it. Should have done. So it's going to be as much a surprise to me as it is to you. I don't like surprises, really. I mean, it could be something from a project that I'm now bored with. Who knows? It might be a real disappointment opening this. What is it? Oh, um, yeah, sort of mildly interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've seen these before. These are the little... Um, 16 pin SOP uh, on one side and uh, SOP, although I think it's SOIC, I can't remember which is which now, um, on the other side to a standard um, dual in line layout. What's interesting about this is that there are actually two versions. Uh, yeah, I bought quite a few of these. I think it's a set of 50. Let's take a close look at this one here. Um, yeah, what's interesting here is that V1.0 at the top, that's version 1.0. Um, now the version 1.0 board, if I get my pencil, has a spacing across the width there of 500 mils or uh, 5 tenths of an inch or 500 thou, I think it is, isn't it? There is a V2.0 board and I'm pretty sure that the listing for this showed a photograph of the V2.0 board. Now that board on the SOP side, let's turn it around to here, has the much wider pads that take the wider package. I think JEDEC is the narrow one and EI, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, the Japanese one is the 
a wider one, but the V2.0 board will take the wider package. And the spacing between these rows of pins is actually 600 mils, uh, not 500 mils. So that's the V2 board, and that's kind of what I wanted, but I kind of knew I was going to get the V1.0 because after I bought these, I contacted another seller and I said, um, what's what's the size of the board? I actually did it on dimensions because I thought that'd be easier for them. Is it, um, I wanted to find out whether it was the 500 mils or the 600 mils, is it a V2.0 board? And then they came back quite quickly and said, oh, sorry, we put the wrong photograph up. We've actually got the V1.0 board. And I think most of the sellers do have this board. So even if you see a listing with the V2.0 in the photograph, you're quite likely to get the 1.0, not the right board, um, to take the wider SOP packages. So this is actually the item I bought and it is still in my purchase history. Um, 50 pieces of the SOP 16 or T SOP, actually it's S SOP I think, 16 to dip 16 uh, pin board, SMD adapter. Now you can see here in the photographs, let me find, yes, that one there, it says V2.0 and that is the wider board. And um, yes, if you look at the SOP layout, you can see those very wide pads, which will accommodate both the narrow JEDEC and the wider, I think it's EIAJ or something. <laughs> I'll look it up in a minute and then I'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but you don't get them. You don't get the V2.0 board. You get the V1. And in fact, if we scroll down into the guts of the listing, they do actually put the size here, 15.6 by 21 millimeters. And uh, if I put my ruler on here, I'm starting at 300. Um, we can see that we've got 10, 15, slightly over 15. So that's the 15.6. Um, width across the board. Now the V2 board would obviously be wider than that. So if you look at the listing and the dimensions of the board, you know you're going to get um, this V, it's on the other side, isn't it? This V1.0 board, even though they've got photographs of the V2.0. The sellers are confused. They don't really know what they're selling. They're not electronics people, are they? They're just traders. Um, so I haven't yet managed to find the V2.0 board. But I'm hoping, now these are the narrow chips, so they do fit on there. I'm hoping that the wider chips will work on here um, if I use my solder paste technique. And that's really why I'm carrying on with this whole solder paste thing, apart from the fact that I'm quite enjoying it because I've never done solder paste before. And well, we all love to learn new things, don't we? Um, I'm hoping that the solder paste will kind of sit under the inside curve of the leg of the chip and attach itself to the pad so that I can actually use the wider chips on the V1.0 board, which strictly speaking, they don't fit on. And so these are today's post bag items laid out really neatly on my desk. Um, now I want to say a big thank you um, once again to Patreon supporters who help me to buy these things, but also help me to live my life as a YouTuber. If you'd like to be a Patreon supporter, click this link here. Um, there are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my nonsense. And uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel, then click this link here. Hopefully you are already subscribed. Cheerio.